is Orli Rahimian. Orli Rahimian is a Fulbright scholar and a PhD candidate in Middle Eastern Studies at, ben at Ben Gurion University of the Negev in Israel. She is the organizer of Kadmata, the Israeli Center for Research Students focusing on Jews from Eastern countries at the Ben Tzvi Institute. She's also teaching classes at Ben Gurion University. She received an MA summa cum laude in Islamic and Middle Eastern studies, and a BA also summa cum laude in Arabic language and literature, and Iranian studies from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Her research interests are the history of the Iranian Jewry, religious minorities in Iran, Iran-Israeli relations, and the idea of the other in Iranian nationality. I didn't know that they had. Her doctoral dissertation is about, quote, the images of the Jews in the eyes of the Iranians during the 20th century. Ms. Rahimian is the recipient of several awards and fellowships. She has presented papers at multiple international conferences and has published several articles, book chapters, and encyclopedic entries about Iran and Iranian Jewry. Ms. Rahimian will talk to us to today or this afternoon about Iran's children in the shadow of World War II. Please. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I'm pleased to be here and I'm also pleased to talk about Iranian Jewry, which is a mystery uh, relating to the, um, when we talk about the um, World War II and Iranian Jews. Um, as a daughter to Jewish Iranian parents that immigrated to Israel uh, in the 70s, um, I remember them talking about their childhood in Tehran and mentioning a neighborhood in Tehran named Nazi Abad. Um, as a child, I thought that the meaning of Nazi Abad, Naz in Farsi, is um, affection or um, being spoiled. I thought that the meaning of this uh, neighborhood is uh, some luxury neighborhood in uh, Tehran. Um, but um, after I did some re research, I found out that th this neighbor neighborhood that uh, is in the southern part of Tehran um, named Nazi Abad after Nazi Germany who helped Iran in building the train rails during the Pahlavi dynasty. So indeed, due to political reasons connected with Iran's relations with Soviet Union and with Great Britain, Reza Shah, Pahlavi, sorry, Reza Shah Pahlavi sought to strengthen his ties with Nazi Germany during the 30s. Commercial and cultural intercourse between the two countries grew with large flu into Iran of German engineers and technicians. As a result, the German and Iranian people's common Aryan origin was emphasized um, as you might know, the origin of the German tribes and the, uh, the Iranian tribes is the same. And this is maybe the reason that Reza Shah Pahlavi changed the name of his country from Persia to Iran, land of Aryans, in 1935. Additionally, Nazi propaganda messages were even broadcast on the country's media, and I will talk about it later. 
Even after Reza Shah was removed from power following the British and Soviet invasion in 1941, Iran suffered political and economic crisis. The instability left its mark on the delicate situation of Jews in Iran and impacted their sense of security, uh, not only during the war, but even after it, I w as I will show in my paper. So in this paper, I will discuss the policy of the Iranian regime and its population towards Iranian Jews during World War II. And I will also discuss um, the question that um, interested a lot of uh, Nazi policy makers, w uh, which is whether the Iranian Jews are Aryans, like other Iranians, uh, especially because there was a small community of uh, Iranian Jews in Europe. But first, let us give you a short survey of the situation of Jews on the eve of the war. The Jewish population in Iran at the beginning of the 40s is estimated to have been between 90 and 100,000 individuals. The centralization and reforming tendencies adopted by Reza Shah Pahlavi with his rise to power improved the economic, legal, and social situation of the Jews in comparison with the past. Nevertheless, generally, with the exception of Tehran, the situation of majority of the Jews in most cities around Iran remained as before. For example, it was forbidden for Jews to serve in high position in government offices or in upper ranks of the army. Moreover, Reza Shah had the goal of creating a modern, unified national identity that would be shared by most Iranians. Um, irrespective of the differences between the various sectors making the society. The new national identity had a tremendous effect on Jewish identity. By retaining their Jewish religious aff affiliation and identity, the Jews of Iran wished to be perceived as Iranians and could more easily assimilated, assimilate in the society which put an emphasis now on secular Iranian nationalist values and symbols. Um, therefore, they put a lot of stress on, on uh, adopting Persian music, poetry, literature, Iranian holidays like Nowruz, for example, Iranian names, and gloried the pre-Islamic past, especially the story of Esther and Mordechai. However, the new national identity was also a two-edged sword, since the nationalistic policies of the government generated xenophobic and at times even racist sentiments which were directed against Jews as well. After the changes in Iranian politics and thinking that occurred in the 20th century, some of Iran's modern secular intellectual occupied themselves with the reconstruction of the national Iranian identity based on the history of the Aryan race of ancient Iran. Thus, new the secular components were introduced with originated, uh, which originated in the Aryan hypothesis and in the universalistic um, philological research that began towards the end of the 18th century which originated in European race science. It was for these reasons that the intellectuals were opposed to Semites race and did not only attack and criticize the Arab, but also the Iranian Jews. Thus, the Jews, as Iran's most ancient religious minority, were not regarded uh, ethnically as Iranians. This kind of national con uh, consciousness Consciousness created problems and tensions between the Jews and um, the, their environment. Um, and there was in no doubt that um, um, Iran's relations with Germany, which reached its peak during the 30th, aided the cultivation of new attitude towards the Jews based on uh, um, racial perceptions. 
Also, the Nazi radio and newspaper propaganda emphasized the common Aryan origin of the two people, the German and the Iranians, while pointing the Jews as an inferior race um, and also was cultivated by many pan-Iranianists uh, that uh, cooperated with the Nazis also generated tension between Jews and Muslims in Iran. Germans' uh, Persian uh, radio broad uh, bro broadcasts um, during the war um, were also that were broadcast uh, into Iran enjoyed the widest possible audience not just only uh, in Iraq, for example, has been mentioned, but also in Iran. I would say that it's quite hard to know um, what was the popularity of this broadcast. Um, but um, I'll give you an example. In the first novel uh, um, of Siminda Neshvar, which is a very famous Iranian um, author called Savashun, the story is about uh, a li the life of a family from Shiraz faced uh, the occupation of Iran during World War II. Um, it's being uh, these uh, broadcasts are being depicted. I'm quoting from the book. While waiting for dinner to be brought in, Zari turned on the radio. But no matter how she tried, she couldn't find the Radio Berlin Persian program on the dial. When Yusuf was in town, he'd played around with it, until finally he, he would find Radio Berlin and listen to the men who rattled off heartfelt insults. Then one man called all people Jews, um, and, and um, as Yusuf would say, and cursed them as if they had personally killed his father. Also, uh, Amir Tahiri, who wrote Khomeini's biography, uh, mentions that uh, Khomeini was one of the listeners of, to this broadcast. Um, as you know, Khomeini will be the leader of uh, 1979 Islamic Revolution, saying that uh, Khomeini listened to the programs every evening with uh, some other mullahs that gathered, gathered uh, at his home. Um, during the evening, he listened to uh, Radio Berlin and the BBC. So, um, this is an anecdote. <laughs> so, this uh, um, raises the question, did this Nazi propaganda have an effect on the situation of Iranian Jews? In general, Reza Shah Pahlavi didn't take any action steps and steps against the Jews. However, there are documented uh, instances of Jews being fired. For instance, um, Dr. Ahmad Matin Daftari, who was, was the Prime Minister in 1939, instructed uh, government offices and the railroad authority not to allow Jews to continue working there. In addition, supporters of pan-Iranism uh, and fascists collaborating with the Nazis increased the tension between Jews and Muslims. Um, there were some um, incidents uh, against uh, Jews, as I will uh, show, but uh, I would say that there wasn't any government policy against the Jews. With the German invasion of Russia, in uh, 1941, an escalation in anti-Jewish rhetoric can be seen. Um, the German invasion of uh, Russia um, and the Nazis' army advance along the South Russian front pleased the German, um, pleased the, uh, the Iranian fascist Abbas Roli Golshayan, who was Reza Shah's uh, fine. Uh, f um, Finance Minister during this period writes that Hitler's army met uh, meteoric advance across Russia and the Soviet defeat were cause for mass celebration in Iran. Following this propaganda, anti-Jewish voices uh, who wish to rid Iran of Jews while availing themselves of Jewish property were heard in the Iranian cities. 
especially in the northwestern boundaries near Soviet Union, where the Nazi army was presented. Also, there were more anti-Jewish articles in Iranian media, and uh, the anti-Jewish sentiment, uh, sentiment um, acquired not only religious prejudices right uh, now, but also racist um, um, characteristics. Um, okay. Let me move on. There, I would say that in general, it seems that uh, there, this uh, propaganda um, didn't. Uh, there wasn't a lot of incidents in practice um, against the uh, Jews. It seems that the anti-Jewish uh, propaganda, but the anti-Jewish propaganda left a deep impression on the elders of the communities who remembered until today the difficult feelings that they carried with them during that time. Um, there was some harassment against Iranian Jews um, in, in, in forms of curses, uh, spitting and so on. Um, nevertheless, there are only few exceptional incidents that are known um, that it seems that are connected with the escalating anti-Jewish rhetoric in this period. First, there is the attack and murder of a few Jewish families in the city of Mian Doab in 1941, in the western uh, part, northeast, in, in northwest of Iran. Um, the second one was the governor of Kermanshah, who ordered to the Jews not to open their stores in uh, the Shabbat. Um, and also um, involved extorting money from uh, the Jews. The third one was the blood libel in Mashhad in 1946 that coincided with the Soviet withdrawal from the city. Though few were injured, the incident left such a strong impression on the Mashhad Jewish community that they left the city for Tehran and later on they even uh, moved from Iran. Um, rumors of Jewish blood labels were also spread in the city of Rasht in April 1946, though the local police force prevented the situation from deteriorating. So it seems that um, there were some uh, incidents, especially because this time were very fragile, but um, in practice, the Jews were not harmed. Uh, were not harmed. I will. If I may, I will end with um, a, another question, which is quite interesting, uh, which is where Iranian Jews were aware of the Holocaust. Um, we know that the Jewish Agency established an office in Tehran in order to help the Tehran children and other Jewish refugees who used Iran as a stopover to the land of Israel in 1942. In this way, a connection was established between Jewish agency officials and Jewish soldiers who served in the Allied armies and Iranian Jews. Many Iranian Jews wished to help their brothers, especially the Tehran children. Um, and when the first refugee arrived from Russia, there was uh, no organized aid. So in order to answer this need, Habib al-Qanayan, who was the head of uh, the Jewish Iranian community and later on was executed in, in May 1979 during the revolution, um, came to rescue them and help them. He organized um, 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 some clothes and uh, undergarments and even uh, money to help them. It seems that um, the news of the Holocaust began, became penetrating only later, with the arrival of the Jewish Agency representative to Iran and after the establishment of the State of Israel, and, and in particular with the translation of books about the Holocaust to Persian, for example, you can see uh, the translation of Mein Kampf and also the Hannah Senesh affair and uh, another book that was uh, translated in 1956 about um, the faith of Ur European Jews. So the story of Iranian Jews and the Holocaust is quite interesting and important 
in the light of the Aryan-German connection. And it's also very um, interesting because of Iranian policy today towards the Holocaust. Um, and for another affair that I don't have to discuss, which is this, uh, um, what happened in Paris where uh, an Iranian diplomat actually helped to, uh, sir, uh, to rescue some uh, Iranian Jews during the war. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. <coughs> uh, Ms. Rahimian is right, because when I spent about 10 months in Iran, one year before Khomeini, I really did not know what is the identity of the Jews. Are they f Iranians or Jewish? Uh, it's very difficult was for me to figure that out. Let's open for questions, please, from the audience. And we'll have two or three questions, as time permits. Yes. 